Hi, welcome to Smart and Messy Situations. The discussion for today is Christianity versus Judaism. This is why I do not get involved in religion, but instead I pray directly to the Most High God. Many, many years there has been a controversy or an upheaval between Christians and Jews. Well, I want to discuss that because Jesus was actually born before Christianity came into existence. So tell me your thoughts on this. Is this the true reason why Jewish people were put into a Holocaust and why they were um, why the, the others were trying to destroy them. Just tell me your opinion. Thank you. Jewish people considering Christians as idols worshippers. Why? Because Jewish people, first of all, they don't know Christianity. The majority of Jewish people, they don't know. We've never been taught Christian rules and to know if it's wrong or right. Like, we just know that it's wrong. That that person is saying, that man was no man. He was not a man. He was God. It's God. He was God and he is God and he will always stay God. For us, simple Jewish people that are following Halakha, that's a mistake. Based on the teachings and learnings I've been exposed to, tradition that we inherit from our ancestors, you can never say that something else except for God is God. You cannot. Do Jews believe in Jesus? Hi, my name's Miriam. I'm an Orthodox Jew and I share what my life is like. Whenever I discuss this topic, I feel like I need to put a video warning. I am discussing Jewish beliefs. I am not telling anybody that their beliefs are wrong or that they should believe as I believe. On this channel, everybody is welcome. Please be kind in the comments. Now, let's get into it. Jews recognize Jesus as a Jewish man. He was born of a Jewish mother. We do not recognize him as a prophet. We do not recognize him as a son of God. And we do not recognize him as a Messiah. Jesus does not play a part in our religious belief, and if somebody tells you he does, they're no longer practicing Judaism. I say this to make the distinction because some people have heard of Jews for Jesus. That is not Judaism, that's Christianity disguised as Judaism to try and get Jews to convert. Let me know if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them, and if you'd like to learn more about my life as an Orthodox Jew, feel free to follow along. Can a Jewish person believe in Jesus and still be Jewish? Well, that's a loaded question. Hi, my name is Miriam. I'm an Orthodox Jew, and I share what my life is like. On one hand, there is the opinion that if you are born Jewish, Judaism is more than just a religion. It's an ethno-religion. So even if a person is not practicing Judaism, they are still Jewish. On the other hand, there are those that believe that if a person is Jewish, but following Jesus, they're not actually Jewish. And the obvious next question is, why can't they be both? Judaism and Christianity are two separate religions. We don't believe the same things. But there are some fundamental Christian beliefs that goes against the cornerstones of Judaism. Jews believe that Jesus was Jewish, but we don't believe that he was a prophet or the Messiah. We're still waiting for the Messiah. Also, the idea of the Trinity goes against Judaism's belief in believing in only one God. Jews believe that's polytheism. If you are watching this and you are Christian, I am not trying to tell you that your beliefs are wrong or that you should believe what I believe. We're two separate religions and that's okay. We can still love and respect each other. This, this is where I think we could have an interesting conversation about the relationship between Judaism and Christianity. So there's an idea in Christianity, which is I think the central idea, which is that you need to face the potential for malevolence that exists within you and in the world. So that's Christ's confrontation with the devil in the desert, with Satan in the desert. You have to come to terms with that malevolence, that's part of existence. And you have to voluntarily accept 
the burden of suffering. And so that's the acceptance of the cross. Okay, so you take on that, you say the suffering, so there's an idea that Christ is a messianic figure because he took the suffering of the world onto himself. And what that means to me is that he was someone, speaking um, conceptually, who decided that the suffering of the world was his responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to decide that that's your responsibility. You take that on a bur as a burden. You do the same with the malevolence. So when you read history, you read history as a perpetrator. Right? Maybe you also read it as a victim, but you certainly read it as a perpetrator. And then that's on you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then the question is, what happens when you do that? And I would say the answer is two things. Is that, first of all, it starts to force you to develop. Like, to learn what you need to learn in the world, and to absorb the information that would enable you to start to face the suffering and to rectify it. So that forces you to become a more competent person, and that's the socialization part that you thought of as so important. But then there's a secondary thing that happens too, which is that taking on that additional stress and demand voluntarily transforms you biologically, because within your genetic structure, let's say, there's all sorts of potential. But that won't be unlocked unless you place yourself in a position where the demands necessitate it. And so by following that pathway, truth, let's say, the acceptance of suffering and the confrontation with malevolence, so that's the heaviest load that you could take on, then you actually produce a psychophysiological slash spiritual transformation in yourself that matures you into, like, the representation of the Father on Earth. That's why that... That's how that lays so, itself okay, so out. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad he got us here because the question that I said to you, I, there was only one thing I said to you guys before yeah, we yeah. started that I wanted to get to something about most of the lectures that you're, when we're doing these things, you're usually talking about the Old Testament. Now, obviously, you're an Old Testament guy. I'm fond of it. But my, my question was, do you think that Ben, or, or just people that believe in the Old Testament exclusively, are missing something. So you just laid out a case of something that potentially is missing so there. Do you think that argue. is a I'm fair argue. argument? Well, what I'm gonna argue is that what you just said is fundamentally unchristian, in the sense that you're saying that everyone is supposed to imitate Jesus, and the basic conceit of, from what I understand, uh, speaking with Christian theologians, is that we are fundamentally incapable of taking on our own sin, and so we have to have somebody who comes in the form of Christ on earth in order to accept that suffering for us, and that that is the purpose of God actually embodying himself in Christ, is to provide human beings the capacity to withdraw from original sin, that we don't actually have the capacity hmm. beyond a certain point to overcome, and that's why Jesus as a singular figure is necessary. I actually agree from a Judaic point of view with everything that you say, because for me it's about accepting responsibility for my own sins on myself, and I don't have the ability to say that there is the, the suffering servant, the suffering Lamb of God, who sacrificed himself to relieve me of my sins, mm -hmm. and therefore give me a fair shot at life. Yeah, well, uh, okay, so, okay, that's a, that's a really good objection, I think, and I think that there's a fair bit of confusion about that in the Christian community, for example, so I would say that that perspective is more explicitly Protestant, and then then I would put the Catholics next to that, but then I would put the Orthodox types fairly far away from that, which is why so many Orthodox Christians, I think, have been interested in what I'm saying, because their sense, and this is where my knowledge of Christian theology starts to run out, because mm -hmm. like, I'm not an expert on, you know, in, the, in the doctrinal differences. Right. Um, their sense is that it's the imitation that's of primary importance. Now, mm -hmm. it's, it's a weird thing, because even in classical Christianity, you have, let, let's say, Protestant Christianity, you have this idea that, well, Christ died to save us all from our sins, and so we're already redeemed. But that doesn't alleviate the moral burden, weirdly mm -hmm. enough, because you'd think it should. So there's this paradox. And I think it's, I, I think part of the reason for that, this is, this is an extraordinarily complicated thing, but in, in, in the Brothers Karamazov, Christ comes back to earth. Right. And... Um, in Seville during the Spanish Inquisition, and so he's doing his miracles and raising people <coughs> from the dead and like being all messianic. And right. the first thing that happens is the Inquisitor arrests him, right. throws him in prison, and then comes to visit him and basically says, Look, um, the last thing we need after setting up this church for 2,000 years is you. You're a lot of trouble. You've put a moral burden.